packaging and library management he also lectures on reading read aloud to children and readers and for librarians i mean there is uh, no need for introduction of dr rajendra kumbhar sir he is very well known and uh, for us he is our guru i request now uh, kumbhar sir to please start good morning friends good morning sir good morning sir it's indeed my pleasure to speak to you this uh, morning and uh, i appreciate the efforts made by dr subhash athawle and his friends uh, for organizing this uh, contact sessions and uh, i also appreciate the response that you people have given to this uh, uh, venture uh, uh, athawle sir has actually initiated i hope uh, 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 i am audible yes so uh, this this particular lecture series uh, what uh, tole sir wanted uh, uh, to have on research tools we as a teaching faculty have been actually involved in uh, teaching and then the uh, other most important activity we carry out is research and uh, in the modern days uh, there is a lot of uh, research tools uh, are upcoming and developing constantly amongst the various uh, tools uh, i am specifically interested in talking with you about uh, the uh, pre information resources or what we call as a uh, open access resources the open access resources or as i was just saying or as a, a pre resources we as teachers and researchers know actually the value of uh, uh, research material or more particularly research literature or uh, more specifically what they can call as research articles and uh, they have been made available by the research fraternity and the publishing community uh, as a subscription based resources uh, for quite thanks to the modern technology that has uh, made available these resources now uh, free of cost and uh, uh, thanks also to the technological development because of which actually we are able to upload those resources and we are able to access them download them and all that now another feature of these technological revolutions with reference to research and pre resources is that the uh, uh, journals are made available to the research community in a package and uh, that package is known as databases we are all familiar with the databases made available by the implibnet and enlist uh, consortium and the there are various commercial databases uh, uh, like you must have heard about uh, science direct ipsco and imrad and like that friends in continuation with those uh, uh, subscription based resources the philanthropic mindset people are constantly making efforts to make available free resources and in the form of databases the feature of the database is that actually it puts together hundreds and thousands of journals in one package and the greatest benefit of this is that you need not to actually browse each of the individual journal or each of the individual issue of a journal rather it comes as a bundle as i said so with a single search system you are able to actually search articles from hundreds and thousands of journals and their issues and to up with to share with you the features the characteristics of some of the free resources and let us begin this is going to be actually a, a demonstration come lecture uh because i want actually you people also to try this on your own screen whatever uh, uh, devices you are using laptops or mobiles and uh, i am also actually going to demonstrate it uh, here we go 
actually the very first resource i am going to talk to you is google scholar Uh, uh, I, I was just saying that we are going to start searching with uh, the first free resource that is Google Scholar. In your Google screen, you specifically go Google Scholar. I must actually share this with that uh, Google has developed a number of products and one of the products which is specifically useful to the research community is Google Scholar. The meaning of the term and the terminology is that it uploads only scholarly contents. The scholarly contents, what I mean, is basically three types of resources it uploads and make it available to the research fraternity. One, the research journals. Two, patents. Uh, it also includes thesis and it also includes actually what is called as digitizes or books, monographs. So for that purpose, Google Scholar is a, a search engine come database. It's not exactly a database. It's primarily a search engine. Now I already I'm there in, a, a, in the Google Scholar. I would like to actually bring to your notes the, the tagline that has been put at the, on the screen. I hope you are able to see what I'm marking here. Stand on the shoulders of giants. But that actually, this particular tagline has been picked up from Newton's very famous quotation, where Newton said that I could see far and beyond by standing on the shoulders of the giants. What he means by this is that he was able to actually acquire a lot of knowledge by referring the knowledge created and stored and made available by his ancestors, the seniors, what do you mean by this? Google is also trying to say that stand on the shoulders of giants means actually you read the contents made available in the Google Scholar uh, search mechanism so that you are able to actually use the resources. While I'm talking about the use of the resources, I must also tell you this that a counterpart goes there. A lot of research material is available on the internet and if we use them without acknowledgement, that will lead to a plagiarism. Here, when Google is saying stand on the shoulders of the giants, they actually mean that you should uh, use these contents, but of course with proper acknowledgement or proper citations. Friends, let us actually uh, see. This is the simplest search screen that Google Scholar made available. With another screen, what I will be talking a little later, is the advanced search screen. With this sing, uh, 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 single or simple search uh, mechanism, you type the terms here. Let us start searching something about, I will be searching with different terminologies from art, science, commerce, and other disciplines. Let us start here searching something about e-commerce. And uh, after the entrance, what I'm able to see a screen, let us try to understand the screen. I always actually insist on this, that as a researchers, we should be able to actually understand the, a set of information that is presented to us by the search mechanisms. If you look here, actually at the very top, it says how many items have been retrieved or indirectly what they mean that how many items of information or scholarly documents are available on e-commerce as far as Google Scholar is concerned. If you could read that number, it is 18,20,000, a huge number that is there actually. And uh, Google takes pride actually in saying that it has in uh, 0 0.03 seconds. We all know actually that uh, time is what is more important is relevant items to work. Let's move ahead a little on reading and understanding an entry. The very first line of this particular entry, here actually what I'm marking is a single entry. Of this, always is actually hyperlink line along with the title of the document. It is Electronic Commerce Managerial Perspective 2002. That is what is actually the uh, uh, title of the document. 
it also indicate this is available in pdf when it says that it is a pdf and then some uh, 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 actually as source where it is available that means this particular article is available to you in pdf full text form we have actually a value of full text compared with the abstract that is presented here the second line of an entry always provide information journal international journal of electronic commerce probably and this has been published in 2004 friends all this information is so valuable because many times you teacher aren't must be knowing actually the journals to you and uh, 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 by reading the title of the journal you will realize uh, actually uh, uh, the reputation of the journal and that is why it is important actually to read these these lines the year of publication is again very useful to us we know actually that indicate the currency of the document how latest it is we know actually this is 2004 means a quite old document if you read in some another entry probably it will show that this is 2007 later than that or if you could read here it is 2016 much much recent document so that is the another component what follows after the bibliographical details after the publisher and the journal and all that information comes here actually a abstract of the document very useful i tell you as a library professional we insist teaching this to the research community and the student community that these three four five six seven lines whatever the abstract comes they're mostly about four lines when it comes to google scholar Reading those lines help you to decide whether the document, that is an article or a book, whether it is useful to you, whether it contains the items of information that you are interested in, and with that you can take a decision that yes, I will go with this document or maybe the other way around. And for this document and that is the reason we, we, we actually insist that this this you must have patience to read these three four lines that saves a lot of your time or otherwise actually we rush uh, and we miss out a important document come to the last line contains a lot of information in much of a codified form this is actually the star mark i hope you are able to see on the last line of the entry and once you take your cursor there, you are able to see a tag there saying that save. What does mean is that suppose you are actually interested in this particular document, uh, it also allows you to create your own electronic library in the cloud as you are made or stored. Similarly, this article of this book can be saved there. Once you actually create your own library, I will show you that little later, then by a single click to this particular star mark, you will be able to save this article into your own library and you will be able to read this document as per your convenience at some later time. So this is one of the way to codify it because simply star doesn't mean anything to us, but it has a, a meaning uh, actually uh, uh, coded there. Let's come to another uh, actually coded information you can say. This is a, a double inverted comma looks, but it says site. Imagine that this is the book actually you have referred, or this is the article you have referred, and then you want to actually uh, acknowledge it, or rather more uh, direct term is you want to cite it. We all know actually the value of citations in research of late, particularly uh, once you cite it properly, you need not to be afraid of the plagiarism as such. Uh, coming back actually if you click to this it provides you a ready-made uh, uh, format of uh, entry which uh, uh, in different style manuals i know actually as a researcher you are familiar with the style manuals using those styles you have to actually cite or create a reference entry in your document that you are writing, you are creating. For example, APA, American Psychological Association Style Manual, you people are familiar. Some of you must be familiar with this uh, Modern Language Associations, MLA Style Manual. Chicago is another one here. Reward is also there. There are so many of them. But here, Google Scholar makes it available a ready-made entry. Suppose actually I want to cite this document 
I, the simplest method is actually this is what I can select it, copy it, and then paste it at the appropriate place in my document. Well, that is what actually, so you need not to bother about whether, what punctuation mark should be there, whether a particular piece of information is to be put in italics and all that. Uh, see how much of your efforts are saved and how much accuracy comes in your citations and references. And for that purpose, I will actually show demonstrate it once again. If you are interested in citing this document or this document, so this document under that is actually this double inverted comma click to it and it will take you to actually a series of entries in different style manuals you pick up that friends actually at the bottom of this particular site format there are some of the hyperlinked items being shown here for example it takes an end notes and rep man and rep work these are some of the actually softwares that help you to manage your references. Some of them are actually on subscription based. Some of them are free of cost. Zotero is one of them not mentioned here. It's a software available free of cost for managing your references. So, uh, uh, but then uh, this takes you to another technological aspect. I don't want to actually go into it. What I was trying to show that you select an entry, copy and paste it, and you will be actually uh, uh, completing your citation and referencing work so easily. Then friends actually comes the third piece of information which is being codified again at the bottom of each entry called cited by. We all know actually the, the value of citations of like, we all know actually the how to cite quality literature in your own writing by way of literature review or by, by way of providing evidence or proof of earlier or a cost research. We also know actually the value of citations more particularly from the point of view of what is called as H index and impact factor and all the indices based on which the quality of research is currently being measured. Well, by that way actually, what citations are received to your own articles always indicate at least at present, so it's a quantitative parameter but it indicates it's the quality article. More citations, higher the quality. That is what is the current formula that has been going on. Now, this indicates that this particular book, as I said, this is a book actually. This has been cited by 5,602 people. The other one has been cited by 720 people. Next one is 2,000 odd people. If you read the next one is again 2,200, there may be actually some documents cited much less times. For example, 1,300. Now friends, what for this piece of information that is cited by is useful to you? It is useful for the reason that, suppose actually on this particular page of Google Scholar, there are 10 documents, imagine out of which but anyway you are not a, a going to read all the 10 or all the 100 or all the 18 lakh 20 thousand no way you will be <sighs> reading the selected items the question comes how to select if i have to select say for example just three articles out of these 10 what criteria i'm going to apply one criteria may be actually the author the name of the journal and the year of publication, the other criteria actually is certainly, certainly this is cited by, because if it is cited by 5,000 plus people, a simple indicator is that this has been used by 5,000 plus people. Don't you want to read actually a document that has been read and referred and cited by 5,000 plus people? Yes. When more particularly compared with another document which may be about 10, 20, 100 citations and one document with 5,000 plus citations, always actually it's a, a help that comes to the researcher. Yes, I will go with this particular document. This may be the most basic document probably on this particular topic. I won't be actually able to refer to all topic, but what I mean is that this is an indicator. One, two, Actually, if you look into it, when I'm taking the cursor to this particular piece of information, it is showing that it is hyperlink. That means I will be able to actually access all these 5,602 documents if I click to it. 
the screen is going to take me to those. See here. Now this is a change screen. This is these are actually 5,602 documents and thereby these many people, these many researchers have referred to that particular book that was the Electronic Commerce a Managerial Perspective 2002. That particular document has been used. So it is not simply knowing the number who have used it, but you are also able to know who are the people they have used and in which document they have used. Look at the, the, the fantastic uh, uh, picture of the hyperlinked work. It has been helping you to jump from one link to another link. So uh, the, 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 the why cited why that particular piece of information for two purposes it is useful. One, it helps you to know what are the, uh, how many people have cited it and then uh, who are those people. That's what you can know. Then comes actually here another uh, uh, codified piece of information called related articles. What do I mean by this? See, all these uh, 18 lakh 20,000 documents are with e commerce, related with e commerce, no doubt about it. But within that, this particular document has been written from the managerial perspective point of view. There may be another article on e commerce from the financial perspective point of view. There may be another article from psychological perspective, maybe from the customer's perspective, and all that. As far as this managerial perspective, this aspect that has been discussed in this document, what are the other related documents with this particular context? Here actually are the related articles. If I click to this, it's going to take me to further select article. Look here. There are 101 articles. They are all actually related to the contents of the first document that we actually referring uh, 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 now. Right. Right. So I go back and that is the reason actually this related article is as good as actually, you know, whenever you want a selected articles for the purpose of uh, uh, writing your literature review. And for that purpose, actually, this is a fantastic. That reminds me, actually, all these free resources, they are useful in different steps of your research. Uh, I was told by uh, uh, Dr. Atoli and his friends that they conducted an earlier session on the preparing a research proposal. In the research proposal, as well as in the research reports like thesis and articles, you have to write literature review. And for that purpose, actually, you require literature. These all three resources are actually the resources that will help you to uh, 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 get documents for the purpose of uh, writing your literature review. So these are the related articles useful for completing your literature review. Comes one other piece of information that is the uh, uh, second last of few more items, but here comes all versions. What does it mean by that? You know, actually, an article may be available in a PDF format, may be available in HTML format, it may be available on the different platform. For example, this is available in academia. Uh, we know there are some documents article in the research gate, another uh, 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 what is called a social media uh, 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 site where you have uh, uh, resources available. Look at here. Oh, these are the actually the different uh, versions of the document available on the different platform. This is available on ResearchGate, I, as I was saying. You know, friends, ResearchGate is actually such a facility where the researchers can upload their own articles, even if they are published in the subscription-based journals. And as a result, they will be able to get more citations to the research. Similarly, by participating in ResearchGate, you will be able to access the articles published by other people, particularly the articles which are available in a commercial database, you may not be easily able to get it unless your library is subscribing to those databases. In such cases, quite possible that articles may be available in a research gate, which is actually a platform that makes available uh, the resources to those uh, network people, those who are participating in the research gate. Oh, uh, that is what actually the, the piece of uh, information, what is called as all versions. And then, of course, if they want, like view HTML and all that, uh, that is what actually a piece of information that is one single entry how to read it. Let us go uh, to for some filtering mechanisms. In all the databases, the fantastic feature is that how to filter it. 
as i mentioned somewhere in the very beginning no researcher is interested in actually referring to uh, 18 lakh document or lakhs of document not at all so in that case how can you filter it one of the filtering mechanism is made available on actually on your uh, left, left hand side that is actually the time filter for example if you are interested out of these 18 lakh odd articles only those documents which have been published since 2020 that is the last uh, uh, about three months uh, you will be able to get them sorted actually i have now clicked to that item and here you come to select 6450 if you remember originally we got 18 lakh plus documents importantly you are able to get the latest document. See here, this was published in 2020. This was published in 2020. This is also published in 2020. All these articles are published in 2020. Don't you think actually that is fantastic? Because maybe by and large, we want our, our students, our scholars, ourselves to refer to the current literature. And similarly, of course, if you want to extend it further, you can have it uh, different durations. Sometimes you may be interested in actually having your custom range, your own range for example maybe uh, say 2001 to 2015 or something like that it is possible i must also bring to your notice that at present these have been arranged all these articles this was actually the selected 2020 uh, we go back to the our original data set that was written in like document at present actually these have been arranged what google scholar says by relevance what do you mean by that the most valuable has been put in first but let me also tell you, Google Scholar never discloses the strategy that uses it to arrange those articles, how they do it. They don't do it. So we have to presume that they have their own, what is called as a secret uh, formula of presenting these items. What article will come first there? Uh, that is a secret that is with Google. But they say it has been arranged by relevance. At the same time, it provides you another opportunity and option if you want to arrange all these 18 lakh documents to be arranged by dates, it's possible. You can ask the Google Scholar to present it by dates and see, it started with 2020, the latest one, that is uh, in the descending order, it goes, the uh, latest comes first and then it actually goes on the backward. So you have the option of sorting it. I must also bring it to your notice that see, at present there is, there are, these are the two items where what you want to, you want to include patents, you want to include citation. That is not an actual document, but it's something cited. That is the reason here they are the by default tick marked items. But if I actually want, I can close it down. And if you could see here now, it is 12 uh, lakh 50,000. If you remember, that means actually there were about 6 lakh uh, uh, patents were there. And if I actually exclude the citations also the number comes to 10 lakh from 18 lakh actually this is another way to filter it out but uh, if you are interested in uh, actually having those uh, citations as well as patents uh, your number stays back to 18 lakh plus items that is actually the uh, the simple screens reading of course if i said this is the full text pdf if i click to it you will be taken to the uh, actual document whatever article or book that has been there i was trying to open actually see the particular Bar -sir, item. Bar -sir, Bar -sir, Bar -sir, sorry to interrupt yes. uh, yes. the session yes, will be exactly in after four minutes then after, after ten, ten, ten minutes again we'll again, join the same remaining, remaining through same link so uh, yes sir yes sir uh, friends, uh, look at here actually. This is what is actually probably the, the review type of information that is there in 12 pages that is was being mentioned there as I mentioned. So you are able to, what, what I was trying to actually show it to you, yes, it, it is not that only the abstracts have been made available, but the full text are also made available. Let's go back to our uh, earlier document. Now friends, after reading this uh, output of the uh, simple screen, uh, uh, let me actually take you to the menu of the uh, Google Scholar. These three lines mentioned here on the left hand side of your screen, they are actually the uh, uh, menus. They are the menu is hidden and you could see that articles, that's what we have retrieved. Profiles actually is something has been mentioned here, my profile. 
this is a very useful service that Google Scholar provides, I tell you. What is that? That Google Scholar offers you an option to prepare your own profile uh, on the Google Scholar. As a result of which, whatever articles you will be publishing, they are uh, automatically being listed there. Importantly, as and when your article gets a citation, that citation is also being mentioned there. More importantly, your H index is automatically calculated and it is being uploaded. Let us see actually if we could uh, click uh, and take you to my own profile. Uh, uh, here is actually my own profile and I will be able to show you that. You are able to see here it's actually my own profile. It comes with your name, your uh, uh, place of work, and then your topics of interest. And it shows actually the uh, 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 how many uh, citations are there. Here actually comes later uh, this thing and uh, the citation, the articles, followed by the how many uh, people have cited it, and all that information. All this is being done automatically once you create create your profile. So I appeal actually all of you to uh, see here it comes uh, uh, that uh, total citations 184 and uh, the H index actually at, uh, from the beginning I have seven and now it is uh, the as far as the uh, since 2015 is concerned my H index is uh, uh, six. All this information I think it is certainly very useful and uh, it comes to um, uh, very handy uh, so I appeal all of you prepare your own profile and uh, once you prepare it, it gets updated automatically. You need not to do anything. Uh, that was actually, let's go back to the Google Scholar where we were earlier there uh, was, uh, with the menu of the Google Scholar. So you prepare your profile, go to my profile and you can prepare a profile. My library, if you remember, actually I was star telling you earlier, here is actually that star marks. And the star marks help you to prepare your library. Here is actually my library. It asks you some of the details so as to register yourself. Of course, you can do it. And once you actually create your library, all the items of information that you would save it with uh, actually by selecting or clicking the star mark there, uh, that particular article or document will be saved here. Very similar to that, a, a, a fantastic uh, service Google Scholar provides is actually setting alerts. Now setting alert actually, if you click to this, it will take you, uh, I have already my alerts been created and that is why it is taking me to this screen. If not, if you are preparing it for the first time, it will ask you two things. One, your email address and second, the topics in which you are interested. Once you provide this information to you, Friends, the Google Scholar keeps you making alert about uh, every new document that has been stored in the Google Scholar or rather stressed by the Google Scholar and every day it will update you. Stop marketing, click this, you are able to see actually a list of top 20. Now what for this, this trend top journal list is useful? It is useful for two purposes. The first purpose is that you are interested in actually uh, reading journals, but you don't want to read every journal. You are more particularly interested in reading the top journals. That is what is always we desire. And then how to know which are the top journals? One way is actually to go to the a journal called uh, Journal Citation Report, JCR they call it, where all the words journals are listed along with their H index, uh, 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 impact factor, sorry, impact factor. But that is a subscription based journal. What is the other way out? Here is actually, so this is, this list is useful for deciding your uh, uh, journals to be read. Secondly, this list is also useful. Suppose you have written an article and you want to send it to some journal. Why to send it to some journal? Don't you like to send it to the topmost journal of that particular discipline or the subject? I'm so sure you are interested in that. So how to know which are the top 20 uh, journals or which are the topmost journals of that particular subject? 
here is the list actually so it is useful this list which is made available by the google scholar under the matrix heading it is useful for deciding your reading material also useful for deciding the journal in which you would like to get your articles published let's go back to the menu of the google scholar and here actually it was the uh, last uh, 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 second last option there comes one more actually apart from settings it's nothing to do with the searching mechanism directly here comes actually the last usable uh, option under the google scholar menu that is being called advanced search if i click to it it does actually help you to decide what you want to search for example if you want if you have a heading something like this as i already typed it e-commerce in india if this is what is actually your title what google scholar does i tell you if i type this here or maybe in the simple search window both the places it search with all these words that is that's what is with all these words meaning it will search on electronic commerce it will search on india also but if you want actually to search it very precisely on e-commerce in india then you type in this particular window and there are actually some more options so as to further filter it for example where you want this term you want this term in the title of the article or anywhere in the article if you want it in the title select this option if you want anywhere, that means the title, abstract, the main part, the conclusion, maybe in the references, anywhere if you want this term, select this option or select this option. You can of course even uh, search it by a specific author or a specific journal or a specific time span. When I mean actually with this see, word or page, it makes a lot of difference. And for showing that, I go back to the uh, original list if you remember with those 18 lakh documents that was there for example if i say this uh, e-commerce as i had done it earlier and by clicking to it this is what i found it if i further say it in, in india what is the number of items that we are finding in india it is from 18 lakh, it has come down 1 lakh 73,000. So certainly much less number because you are. But then I tell you the, the search mechanism, how it works in the whole of the internet. At present, this particular database of Google Scholar has search articles or search information on these two terms. One is e-commerce and another is India. If I, that means it search on India separately, e-commerce separately, and e-commerce in India, so three terms. If you want to make it more precise, put it in double inverted comma. Remember, we had one lakh seventy-three thousand items. Now I put it. Double inverted comma is a feature that is available in most of the databases. It helps you to search more precisely, more accurately. You are able to search it more relevant. If I actually use this double inverted comma option if i go for searching it see how many i found just 2100 by going back i can show you one lakh seventy three thousand kumar sir your audio has gone yeah come uh, and uh, if you look into the uh, the retrieval now it has been drastically reduced. what we want is actually a less retrieval so that it's a more precise one and that is the reason do use actually if you only you don't go for the advanced search mechanism that is there in the menu uh, you can at least put your search into double in the program, that will be able to provide you a more uh, accurate retrieval uh, from the Google Scholar. Friends, this is all. Uh, friends, so this is what I uh, all I wanted to share with you as far as this one of the source that provides you uh, free of cost information, resources, scholarly literature for your uh, review writing. 
let me uh, take you to a, a another source uh, and uh, uh, with that of course uh, we will decide whether we want to go further let's again go back to the original uh, uh, window of uh, google and where i am typing the another source where a lot of uh, free resources and particularly journals are available that is known as directory of open access journal in short it is called doaj that uh, stands for directory of open access journals as the name indicates this is the directory which lists thousands of uh, open access journals let's actually go to the website of DOAJ in short or uh, uh, that is uh, uh, the directory of open access journals friends open access as i mentioned in the very beginning of my uh, talk to you with you that is a uh, free resources see here where i am actually highlighting it there are 14433 journals been listed here in the doaj all the journals are free of cost full text available to you so it shouldn't happen that if at all your research is hampering at least in the modern world it may not to hamper uh, for the paucity for the shortage of uh, uh information sources of journals because look the quantum that is there uh 14000 odd journals are there friends uh, this list only open access journals only pre journals no paid journals are listed in this category as far as the search the journals is concerned it provides actually a simple search window that was there in the google scholar also but it makes you available or two options whether you are interested in searching journals or you are interested in searching searching articles you can select the option if i actually select journals here and if i type here say for example psychology a subject and i am interested in knowing what are the journals in psychology uh, let us see actually what we are able to see see here there are 1136 journals as far as the uh, subject psychology is concerned let me remind you actually being an international repository of open access journals this uh, uh, list journals across the language from different languages so you can of course have the option of filtering it out the language of the journals but yes initially this is what you are able to see let me also show you the further filtering for example with the psychology psychology is a subject with a number of branches or disciplines or sub subjects here it helps you to know actually subject wise now psychology here i am taking as an example this is applicable to all the subjects uh, what you people are teaching see within psychology of those uh, 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 1000 uh, plus journals these are the actually the different uh, uh, subjects related with psychology and the journals related with that so you can come to know that similarly if you actually want to search articles this was the journals remember i can go back to the window i can actually put up this option and let us select the articles option i keep the psychology as it is as my search term. and let us see what happens you are able to see there are 2 lakh 24000 plus articles all for all the field psychology is concerned filters are applicable here also for example all these journals articles are related with different uh, uh, sub topics of psychology and so what are those see here for example psychology proper this is the philosophy psychology and religion around 20 uh, 4000 articles for example medicine and psychology with that particular context and so many of them very similar to this you are able to uh, find out actually these two lakh or articles on psychology are published in which journals see here you are able to see this helps you to know which are the prominent journal the highest number of articles are published in frontiers in psychology this indicate that this is the most important journal as far as the field of psychology is concerned the name of course is also indicating frontiers in psychology but yes we uh, i was trying to tell you that 
uh, what I'm more interested in sharing this information, how to read the information on the screen. So this is very useful piece of information. Once you come to know, these are probably the top 10 odd journals as per uh, uh, psychology previous concern, you can come to know this. You can of course also come to know who are the publishers. We know actually being an academician, the, there are publishers which have uh, created their own reputations and goodwill for a publishing quality literature. And many times it may happen actually you are aware of a particular publisher and so as to know actually who are those people and how much they have published on a particular topic. By going to this publisher filter, you are able to know it. You can also know it by year of publication. Say, for example, there are two articles of, uh, look at very interesting fact we are able to see here on this particular uh, 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 demo. Uh, there are around 3,000 uh, uh, plus, almost 4,000 actually articles. They are published on psychology in 2020. But there are two articles which are to be published in 2022. That means actually their preprints are available right now there. That is what you mean by many time actually now that is what you are ahead of time and that information is made available. So you are interested in articles published on your own subject in a particular year. Say for example here 2017 or 2019 or 2010. Those printers are also available. That is another very important component of uh, the directory of open access journals. This was the search option, friends. If you remember, I said that uh, there is a simple uh, search mechanism available with a, a single window where you can select journals, where you can select articles. But there is a browse by subject option is also available. Many times, actually, we may not be aware of a, a, a particular sub branch which the directory has created it they say for example if i go to social sciences i will come to know what are the sub disciplines there here is a small arrow that actually holds that piece of information what are the subject covered by social sciences not just that within a particular sub subject of social sciences for example commerce what are the disciplines here actually would be like uh, trade, sub trade, and board of trades and business. Within business, I can I'm able to see here a small arrow. That means there are further sub disciplines, for example, accounting and bookkeeping, advertisement and blank marketing, and so on and so forth. If I'm interested in only, say, for example, journals of accounting and bookkeeping, I can click to this and then go to the uh, uh, double click it. Rather, probably you will be able to take go to the uh, journals on that particular subject. Here it is actually accounting and uh, bookkeeping. Here, these are the uh, articles uh, about 12,000. If I click to this option, remember it was at the bottom. I selected it. The moment I select it, here comes a, a small window where it uh, points me through these uh, articles actually on. Uh, accounting and bookkeeping, you are able to see those 12,000 or articles on that particular subject. This is actually the, the uh, directory of open access journals. Friends, let me also be very valuable of information. This actually is the title of the article and this is actually name of the journal. Let us select uh, some journal which is in the English language so that we are able to uh, read the, the further information that is been uh, available there. If I go to the next one, I, I, I'm trying for to find out actually because most of these things I'm able to see they are uh, here it is actually. If I click to this journal of accounting and investment, let us see where it takes me. It takes me to the journal's website, remember very useful for us. Why it is useful? Because it will help you know actually the uh, information about the journal, the ISSN, sometimes we require it, the editorial goals, say for example, you will be able to find it out. Instruction to the authors, that is so important because when you write a particular article, keeping in mind a particular journal, uh, the journal itself provides you certain instructions, what should be the 
that information there the aim in scope scope particularly because whether you are your article fits into the journal scope or not you will be able to come to know this uh, uh, this is what is actually article crossing charges they are actually these are the free journals for accessing purpose sometime they may be charging they also provide you information actually whether it is a, a peer review journal here it has been mentioned i hope you are able to see double blind peer review so all this information because oplet we know that ugc wants your article to be published either in the ugc approved journals or at least in the peer review journals this information you are able to find it out once you go to the journals name clicking to the journals name you are able to go back i i, I will be interested to show you once again if i click to this it will take me this is the name of the journal text to the uh, uh, journal page and uh, you will be able to find a lot of information going there this is directory of open access journals friends let me also tell you as i was trying to tell you by clicking to that particular article title you are able to uh, go to the uh, uh, actually the uh, titles the authors name of the journal iss and rest of the information most importantly here come the abstract and just above the abstract there is a link for full text so if i click to this this is going to take me to the full text article what many time actually we are interested in getting the full text abstract may be available easily on most of the websites but the full text may not be available here comes actually the actual full text article is still not in the english language probably in some another language but yes we are able to see the article all those uh, 20 odd pages or whatever the article contains is available we have cost you can certainly download here is the option actually the portuguese article you can if you click to this you will be able to uh, uh, download it this is what the uh, as far as the directory of open access journals is concerned valuable free source bringing to thousands of journals and lakhs of articles as i was showing here these are the searchable articles actually there uh, the, the here it is actually uh, plus articles there uh, yes sir uh, last five minutes yes, sir. okay now uh, would you like me to continue or you would like to uh, put it for a question answer what do you want no you continue after five okay. minutes okay let me tell you Please. then you will stop right uh uh friends uh, uh, yes sir uh, you provide question. information from your end yes yes great, great. i will go ahead uh, uh we will conclude it after five minutes but before that let me tell you these, these were the two resources i could share with you but there are so many of them the another resource is uh, uh, more particularly on all aspects of education, it provides article that is ERIC. E -R -I, -C. Uh, I, I will type it here so that you come to know actually at least the source. E -R -I -C is Educational Resource Center. And uh, uh, that is a source that brings to you, this is what is actually there. You can search it on your own. Uh, this brings you a lot of information on all aspects of education. For example, right now, we are all using technology for the purpose of education. Uh, uh, on that angle, plus uh, curriculum and uh, evaluation system and teaching methodologies and pedagogies and all those aspects of education. A fantastic resource with hundreds and thousands and lakhs of articles and links are provided to the free full text PDF files if not it provides you link to the source uh, if you have access you will be able to get it so Perfect. this is another uh, huh? one more source which you people must be already knowing and using it if not you use it that is called show the ganga the speciality of the show the ganga repository all people know is a, it's a repository of all the doctoral thesis accepted by indian universities Thousands and lakhs of full text thesis are made available in the PDF format and they are searchable by guide, by research scholar's name, by the university, by the subjects. And uh, I think the UGC and its implemented center at Ahmedabad is doing fantastic work to bring to you the 
doctoral research in full text. Their interest is that people should be able to use these resources so as to produce more quality research. And uh, for that purpose, this resource is also being made available uh, by the UGC. Let me also tell you one more source. This is free of cost. Again, you need not to even register for searching it. There is a, a website called NISCAIR, N-I-S-C-A-I-R. This is the uh, website and a repository of uh, uh, journals. Most of them are actually from the science field. This uh, NISCAIR is a, a science center working under CSIR, that is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. And uh, they have actually a repository of periodicals, uh, about dozens of uh, journals related with uh, science disciplines. They are made available here with uh, NISCAR. And uh, if you actually go to their uh, products and particularly say research journals, you will be able to see actually their website and look here actually the journal, for example, Applied Innovative Research, uh, and there is a journal of uh, biotechnology, journal of chemical technology, in the journal of chemistry, engineering and material science. These are the journals actually, there are many more than uh, of them. Uh, so uh, you, you can certainly make use of this resource also. Uh, uh, while concluding, I must also bring to your notice one more course that is called PubMed. PubMed is a source that brings to you all the literature of the world belonging to the field of uh, science, more particularly medical science, pharmacy, biotechnology, and all related disciplines. Look here, this is this free of cost, uh, bring to you number of uh, 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 articles, actually a large number of it, and uh, uh, use this also. Last one minute, I would like to actually bring to you one more source which brings to you free of cost uh, books this time. This is called Google Books. Google Books are only a repository of, again, lakhs of books. Search here, you will be able to see, for example, geography. You will be able to actually see how many books are there, hundreds and thousands of them. And uh, more importantly, these books are available to text. Uh, these are, of course, not downloadable. You can read them on the screen. You can take reference of it and uh, 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 use it in your uh, research. Well, friend, I, I hope uh, you, uh, you uh, this, this piece of information that was said by me was useful to you. I'm thankful to Dr. Atole and his team that uh, made this uh, uh, venture possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir, I'll, Atole, sir. sir I'll take over for a minute. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank uh, you, sir. Sir, I will take over for a minute. Uh, sir, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Session. It was quite an quite an informative source and whatever. Yes, sir. Thank you, all of you. We're ending the session here. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to Kumbar, sir, and thanks to all the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you once again from the depth of thanks my heart. Thanks a lot, sir. Heart. Thanks a lot.